Welcome to Fontana, California, home to the Two Mile Oval Auto Club Speedway. The now closed and demolished racetrack was ran between 1997 and 2023. Kart, IndyCar, and NASCAR ran there almost every year that the track was open. We head into the race with Brad Keel leading the championship after winning the first race of the season at Sebring. Followed closely behind by Brady, who although finished second, had the pole fastest lap of the race as well as the most laps led. Tempers have flared and potential rivalries are being formed after just the first race of the season. Darren Wyman was fuming after the first race. He was leading under the last caution, but finished 11th after having to pit due to the team not feeling the car enough to make it to the end. After both starting in the top 15, Maggie and Melissa made contact at the end of the first lap, basically ending both of the races before it even started. Other notable rivalries forming are Andrew Williamson and Paul Berganza, and then Devin Brown and Steven Cheeson. Today's race is 150 laps for the Fanta 300 at Fontana. Last time we were at a high-speed oval was the Season 1 finale at Nashville Super Speedway, where we saw a lot of pack racing with multiple cautions. Will we see that same type of racing today? We will have to find out after we set the grid. All right, so I thought I recorded qualifying. I did not. So we will go through the field as we come to take the green flag. With pole, with a 32.973, is Tim Pagolo of Triple T Racing in the Marlboro car. He's the only driver to go sub-33. Qualifying second is Todd Keel. Third is Devin Brown. Fourth is Robert Leeson. Fifth is Darren Wyman. Sixth is Jill Sanvin. Seventh is Wanda Ardell. Eighth is John Vandewettering. Ninth is Meyer Odin. And tenth is Thomas. The field is coming through three and four. The pace car is about to peel off. The pace car is off. They see the green flag. When will Tim green go? Flag, green flag. We are racing at Fontana. Tim Peglo gets a great jump. Leads breaking away from Todd. That looks like Devin. Devin Brown is making a comeback on Tim. He's getting to the inside of Tim. And Devin Brown takes the lead. So looks like Devin will lead the first lap. And he does. Devin started breaking away as the rest of the field goes three wide. A lot of cars running that top line. And Pegalo diving to the bottom with Thomas Keel splitting the middle. It looks like Thomas led that lap. Thomas up 27 spots in that lap. Lots of, lots of moving around. Heading through three and four, Todd takes the lead. Todd will lead that lap. But we have a mess of cars going three wide throughout the field. Staying clean so far and fairly bunched up. 
three wide up front between Thomas, Alexis, and I think that was Cole. Cole is starting to fall back. Tim Pegolo and Thomas are side by side for the lead. Now we got John Vandewettering diving down to the inside. That top line is really starting to form, it looks like. Will that be the line to save your tires? Make a fuel last longer? Not having to brake slightly through the corner? Man, the fuel is bunched up. Yeah, those top two lines are really starting to form. On the inside, Hunter's taking the lead through three and four. This front pack is starting to break away a little bit. The top nine cars. Four wide into one. Everyone's being fairly respectful so far. We got Brady dropping down to the apron below Moto. However, Hunter is still leading the field. He is running that low line, so it might be chewing up his tires, though. As we see, probably half the field. Yeah, we see Meyer jumping up on that top line. That top line is probably going to save your tires the best. Not having to put as much steering angle into it. The key is definitely going to be to, when you do pit, make sure, oh, we see Tim really pushing it there between Alexis on the top and Wanda on the bottom. As Wanda leads that lap, we got four, maybe five wide, three wide for sure heading into the corner with Wanda on the bottom. Look at that, a couple rows back, we got four wide. No, no one is falling off of this pack. We have John leading the field currently. John did lead that lap again. As a reminder, in this series, you get a point for pole, you get a point for leading a lap, and you get a point for fastest lap of the race, and two points for the most laps led in the race. As we now see Melissa fighting for position there, trying to take that lead away from Crass Nasty. I'm honestly pretty surprised how uh, tidy it is. As you see Darren dropping to the bottom, taking the lead away.
it appears that tires are starting to wear because the field is starting to spread out a little bit. We will... Oh, Alexis pushing through the field. Last lap, she was in sixth, jumped all the way up to the top. There's quite a bit of jumping around, quite a bit of movement. We'll go on board with Taylor. See the mess that she sees in front of her. Right up on Tim's gearbox. Is Taylor looking to make it four wide? No, she backs out of it. I thought the field was starting to split up a little bit and break apart, but all this fighting isn't allowing anybody to really break away. There is a little gap between 19th and 20th of a couple tenths, but that's starting to fall apart. We were seeing in practice about 40 lap stints that they were doing before pitting. They can go up to 60, but it's all about uh, what your game plan is. If you want to try and stretch it? That'd be a big stretch. Or if you're just going to do the safe free stopper. It looks like the low line is how you get that pass done, but it seems like for the most part, everyone wants to run that top line. Who is saving the most fuel? This might what this race turned into, at least for the first stint. To have Tim Pagolo back to the lead. However, Moto is pushing on the bottom, and it looks like no, Tim barely led that lap. However, Moto has gotten by him on the bottom. It's almost like dirt track racing where you kind of do that slide job through the corner and slide up in front of the car, and that's how you take positions away. But it does seem like the top line is the preferred line. See a couple cars straddling the apron, that white line on the bottom. Moto does have the lead though. But we have Thomas driving the bottom. Has he been saving his tires for this moment to make a pass for the lead? Does not appear that he will be able to maintain that lead as Moto fights back. We have top three in that shot of Moto, then Thomas, and then Tim, but Meyer is fighting on the top. Will he get a run out of the corner? Looks like Tim's got the run. It's likely going to be, as you would see with Talladega or Daytona in a NASCAR race, where you're not going to want to pit alone. The draft is important. The entire field is basically running qualifying times because of the draft.
the field is starting to spread out, spread out a bit. But not by much. The gap between first and last is two seconds. As tires start to wear and cars aren't able to follow as closely as before. Just a couple laps ago, Thomas was up near the front and now he's almost in the back. <laughs> this is such a wild race. out a bit of a lead though up to three tenths on the field but I don't see that getting very far as the rest of the field is just gonna use that draft to suck right back up to him know what happened back there but it looks like hunter is falling oh no never mind he's getting a huge run through the field i mean granted it's in the back but i thought he had an issue he was falling back a couple tenths that does not seem to be the case still leading the race he is commanding it up front here we'll see how long he's able to continue it a lot of the cars that were running up front that qualified well are starting to fall back in the field down in 29th is todd who started second And in last place currently is your pole sitter, Tim Pagolo. Ooh, see a wiggle there from Tim. Looks like he's struggling. away from likely our first round of pit stops for some of the cars. Although Moto has been leading quite a few laps here, it does burn a lot of fuel sitting up front. You will get those extra two bonus championship points for leading the most laps of the race, but is it worth Maybe sacrificing some track position because you aren't able to save as much fuel. Very early in the race, though. Very early. We have Darren Wyman up to second. Darren, very frustrated after last week. As we have our first car coming to the pit... It appears that it is Brady. Brady is the first car to come to pit. That's kind of surprising. I thought it would have been one of our leaders like Moto. We will have to see how Brady fares on his own. 
Brady is leaving the pits now. But he will not catch the field. Oh, this is awful. Brady's going to lose so much time being on his own with the rest of the field all bunched up, utilizing the draft. Brady had such a great week last week. Finishing second, leading the most laps, having pull, having the fastest lap. He's going to have a, a real hole to dig out of for the rest of the day today. The rest of the field's coming out at two, and he's heading into one. We'll see how he shakes out after the rest of the field pits. Moto still leading. He has led the most laps so far. However, the field still remains, apart from Brady, two seconds from front to back. Thomas and Fred working together on the high side. As we have the next person to come pit, it is Tim Pegolo. Tim was running out front for a while. We'll see where he shakes out compared to Brady. The overcut might be the play on this first stop because you are working together and running quick laps. wide between Moto, Fred, and Thomas for the lead. Michelle putting her nose in there. Did she bump Fred up the track a little bit? Try to do a little bump and run? That's not really how these uh, open wheel cars work, but as we see Taylor, Taylor's getting antsy behind Thomas. Looks like Taylor wants to drive to the front. As we see more cars coming to the pits, Moto, your leader, as well as Thomas have pit now. Brady and Tim are together. They need to work together to getting as much speed as they can. As we now have Paul Braganza in the lead. I missed it, but Crass Nasty also pit. As he's coming out in front of Brady and Tim. It'll be interesting after this first round of pit stops. You can see back here all the cars that have pit have come out sort of together. They need to work together with these fresh tires to make up much as much time as they lost from running on their own. As Paul Baganza leads that lap. down to the bottom into the lead. As we see more cars coming to pit. John has taken the lead away from Taylor. And it looks like the field, for the most part, is starting to... No, oh, never mind. I thought they were going to single file out. And there they are, back to three wide right in the next corner.
as we have Taylor now coming to pit. A line of cars coming to pit with John... John Stango to lead the field. This is going to be a wild race. Very... Uh... Very surprised how... Good they're doing as a... As a group to not crash. The whole field is doing a great job after we, what we saw in Sebring. As we have the next batch of cars come in. So this is where it's going to start to get interesting. Which group of cars will be the fastest? Of the cars that pit, will jump back to that group. Looks like Brady and Tim and Thomas are fighting. Oh, as we see cars coming out, like Andrew there. Where... Andrew's coming out to pit, and he is well behind the rest of the pack. So it's going to be very interesting. It's like Maggie's coming out of the pits now. Or no, Maggie wasn't able to get to the pits. Will she have enough fuel to make it around? Oh, a disaster for Maggie if she isn't able to coast back to the pits. She and Melissa were out on that first lap of Sebring. First lap of Sebring because of a, in the last corner, a collision. Oh, it does not look like she's gonna be able to make it. That's heartbreak. Yeah, we see there, as the rest of the field, you saw Maggie just coming out of frame there. The rest of the field comes through. And there, oh, there she is stopped rolling backwards. That'll be a caution. Caution, yellow flag. And we have a yellow for Maggie. Not be able to make it around. She almost made it to pit lane, but was unable to. The field will come around and find the pace car. Pace car is coming out of the pits currently, so they will catch up to it. Everybody had pit up to that point. Maggie was the last car not to pit. It must have been that she was not able to get down. She must have been running that top line and couldn't get down to pit lane. Oh, what a heartbreak. I don't know how, but Alexis is a lap down. She pitted on lap 42 with the rest of the cars. Did that? Did she get just snuffed out by the rest of the field? Getting around, did Cole get around her as she was coming out of the pits when the yellow came out? Well, that's going to be a tough break for Alexis. Heading into this race, the championship leader from winning la the first race was Brad Keel. Brad is currently in 22nd. Granted, as we saw, there's a lot of movement that happens during this type of pack racing. So any time gained that we saw from like Cole up front, any time gain just sort of evaporated because of this yellow. As we're hearing that there were some cars that pit, 
Was that? Is that true? Yeah, we did have some cars. It looks like the first car to pit under there, under that caution, was Thomas. He was running 10th. Cars that pit were Thomas, Brady, Moto, Crass, Tim, and Michelle. Interesting move to pit there when you had just pit a couple laps prior. It might be that they are going to try and do it on one more stop where the rest of the field is going to have two stops. So we have a new strategy coming out where Thomas on back is going to try a one-stop strategy. They're going to have to sort of sit back in the pack and save some fuel. But we will see how well that will work for them. Got the one to green. Lights are out on the pace car, so we will go green next time by. It's like Maggie is getting back out there. She is three laps down now. It, there was, it appears there was no mechanical, it was just she ran out of fuel and was not able to coast. So, three laps down, might be able to survive some through attrition if we stay green the rest of the race. There might be some way to move back up a couple positions, but it's going to be a rough day for Maggie. Pace car is about to come in. The starter has the fl green flag. Green flag, green flag. And off goes Cole leading the field as we see a big stack up behind. Starting to spread out a bit, but back there, you see. The field fanning out from Meyer on back. Up front, we have Paul Braganza taking the lead away from Cole. After that first lap of the restart, we have Kyle also moving up a couple spots. Ooh, is Cole in the wall there? Saw a bit of smoke come from the left or the right rear of Cole. Does not appear to affect him. He is still up on that gearbox of Paul. The field is spreading out, though. Which... With the field spreading out, that means bigger runs, more speed, more danger. Wow, they're really packed up here going through one as we have Steven Cheese into the lead on the bottom. wide again into one for the lead. We have Cole coming out on top from that bottom line. However, Steven Cheeson is right below him. As we see Todd getting a run up on that higher line, but getting stuck by and an even bigger run for Kyle. Kyle's going to dive down to the bottom. Maybe a little tap there to Steven. And a big run from Kyle is going to get him to the lead. As we now see Cole, or uh, Zach, 
on the bottom. Zach running the bottom around Kyle. And Zach will take the lead. Moving up the field is Fred. Looks like Fred's going to lead this lap, possibly, unless... Oh, Todd might beat him to the line, run that low line. That's going to burn up your tires, though. How long can you really run like that? See, in the back of the field, Michelle and Brady are sort of falling off of the main pack. They'll need to work together to catch back up. Some more smoke up front. Ooh, is that an issue for Darren? Oh! It looks like he might have touched the wall. Part of his front wing is missing. He is struggling to hold on to that car. Oh! Man! Not able to get down to the pits. Looks like Cole's also in. Did he have some damage? But for sure, you can see there, Darren is missing part of his front wing. Darren is on his own. We go up, back up front as Kyle is leading. We see Andrew really pushing Paul there. They've got a rivalry going, so it looks like Andrew really wants to get by Paul there on the bottom. Paul not giving him any room, though. Squeezing him down below that white line. Battle for the lead is Andrew and Paul. Meyer looking to split the middle. Darren was able to make it back to the pits. Is that it does appear That Cole did have some damage because he was in there for quite a long time. Cole was in there for almost a minute. See Darren in the pits there. Up front leading now is Steven Cheesen. Brady and Michelle, you can see there at the top of your screen, back of the tail end of the field. Have caught back up. As Todd has now taken the lead, it looks like Rob wants to throw it down on the inside there. Robert Leeson in that purple and white Taco Bell car. Looking to make his way down the bottom on that white line, but struggling to find some grip. He will drop down below the apron, like onto the apron. But Todd will lead that lap. You see Darren there coming out of the pits after getting a new front wing. Robert Leeson and Crass Nasty going at it. Four wide into one with Rob, Paul, Steven, and Kyle. Kyle backs out of it and leaves the couple that are up front to fight. Robert on the bottom. Crass up top. Looks like Paul's getting a pretty decent run out of the corner there. He'll drop to the bottom and lead that lap. Crass hanging on the outside, looking up, falling back actually a little bit. Robert was running that higher line there, as you saw, and it looks like, yeah, he is getting a run, as well as Samantha. But a monster run from Kyle as he drops to the bottom below Rob and takes the lead. He's got to move up the track and try and block as best he can.
as we see back in the pack, it is wild back here. Little wiggle from Brad there. As it is a mess back here. Samantha has taken the lead as it appears that Darren is back in the pits. So more issues for Darren was more than just that front wing. Steven Cheeson has a healthy gap. The field is starting to string out a little bit for those first couple of cars. Steven running that low line, taking any air off of that is uh, Todd there down at the bottom of the track. Off of Todd's wing. However, Robert Leeson and Paul Verganza moving their way around cheese. How much fuel do you save? How much do you want to lead? This is the question. Darren is back out of the pits. The field's coming out of the backstretch, and Darren is entering three. So the field will catch Darren within the next couple of laps. How will the field deal with the lap car of Darren? taking the lead from Kyle. I don't really have a way to track it, so, but I believe Moto still has the most laps led. He led quite a bit near the end of that first stint. Fastest lap of the race so far. Fastest lap of the race so far is Tim Pagolo, currently in 13th. But his fast lap is a 31.6. Back up front seeing some movement between the leaders. Steven protecting that low line, not wanting anybody to dive beneath him into the corner. However, Kyle is making a run on the outside. We haven't seen a lot of passes on the outside today. But he's got some help from Hannah on the top. But it looks like Paul through the middle... Going to drive through. Ooh, we saw a wiggle there from Crass in the 69 car. But he hangs on to it. Yes, now he's in the lead. This is even more so pack racing than we saw at the end of the season last year at Nashville. But it is a lot cleaner. We did have some incidences in practice. But that might have been with people on old tires, people on new tires. So we'll see if we can stay green through the next round of pit stops. Which should be happening in the next uh, 10 or so laps. How people will fare. I think it's when people get those big runs. They can't handle the speed going to the corner. 
as we see Zach and Paul ripping the fence like a dirt track up top there. Steven Cheesin on the bottom, going around Wanda and Kyle for the lead. What a mess do we have here. Real close racing I saw there with Moto. We'll go on board and see what he's seeing as Paul slides up right in front of him. Oh, I appear that we're hearing that we had some type of incident. There was a crash. Caution, yellow and that'll be a yellow flag. Who was involved? Oh, Michelle down on the inside wall. Who else? Thomas without a front wing. Maggie involved again. Oh, we're going to have to go back and see what happened there. Here we are with Thomas. Oh, it looks up front. It looks like Brad initially started that. Looks like Brad and Maggie. Maggie slides up the track a bit. Oh, Brad. Brad hip checks her. Oh, we got Cole airborne. Thomas flipping around. Oh, and the Michelle gets caught into it. We'll see what Michelle saw. Oh, there's nowhere she could go. Up and over, too. How much damage does Brad have? We will see. As it looks like only a couple cars stayed out. Wanda, Paul, and Zach, and Kyle stayed out. The rest of the field pit. See them pit lane. People coming in. Making their service and heading out. Michelle got emergency service after being upside down and came back in now. And uh, we're hearing from race control that for avoidable contact, that Brad is gonna get a drive-through penalty. For avoidable contact for that incident. Here's that replay. Where Brad slides up into her and causes the chain reaction. Brad gets out of it relatively unscathed. But quite a bit of damage for the rest of the field behind him. Lights are out on the pace car, so we will go green next time by. Super unlucky day for Maggie. As she's back out of the pits again. She's gonna run out of front wings. Oh no, she ran out of fuel that first time. It was just unfortunate that she was in the back of the field, minding her own business, and got caught up in that with uh, Brad sliding up into her. She was up in like 27th or 28th. Getting ahead of Darren and Cole that had issues, but, uh, no such luck staying ahead of them now. What is Steven Cheesen doing? He's popping his nose out of line. Is his car, his car might be 
a little hot. Running in packs like this will bring up your oil temperature. We'll see if this is uh, something that's going to plague him through the race. The field is coming out of four to take the green again. Wanda will be the first one to see the green. And she is off and green running. Flag, flag. Rest of the field bunching up. Farther back in the field, you see a little bit of movement. Will anybody get a big run out of the out of two? Does not appear so. As Paul goes around Wanda. Zach diving to pit lane. So is Brad. Brad serving that penalty. And Michelle. Michelle was caught up in that incident. Darren driving around Wanda. That's going to get Darren a lap back. It'll put him four laps down instead of five. As we reach the halfway point of the race. Not quite sure why Darren's fighting so hard. He is five laps down. As we see the top four cars breaking away. The top four being Wanda, Kyle, Paul, and Steven. The next sort of group is Todd. Todd and Crass and Hannah. As we see the leaders are coming up on Brad, who just came out of the pits. How, how will they get around him? Looks like Kyle gets stuck below him on the bottom. Oh, Kyle's coming to pit. So a lot of the cars that stayed out are pitting now. Maybe they're hoping for a yellow under that next, under that restart. The field is starting to bunch up a little bit. Now the cars of Brad in that red and white 301 Miller car is... Oh, he's on the lead lap. He's fighting to stay on the lead lap. So he has a valid reason to fight. Do that drive through penalty. He's trying to stay on the lead lap. Hoping the yellow comes out while he's ahead of the field. But Darren really should not be fighting. race control didn't give brad a stop and hold considering that he took not a couple people out of the race but did quite a bit of damage he only got a drive-through penalty don't really know what i was thinking there oh as we see some smoke is that paul getting into the back of chris as we see both paul and chris falling back quite a bit that Havilene car of Paul might have gotten back into the number 69 Crass Nasty. Oh, we see there in that green Pepe, the frog car, Andrew not letting Paul go by him. They have a little bit of a rivalry going. Back up front, Moto has made his way back to the lead. Led a lot of laps in the beginning of the race.
Moto's looking real strong today. As we see Hannah in front of the outside. They go three wide with Todd on the bottom. Moto and Taylor fighting for the lead. As Hannah drops to the bottom, did Hannah lead that lap? No, Taylor did. Paul Braganza has pit. We go back up front. Hannah now leading. As we have Wanda hugging that white line on the bottom. Oh, she is coming to pit. That's why that was. Wanda was the last car that needed to pit that had stayed out under that last yellow. Brad, the first car lapped down in 21st he is needing to get to the head of this field and have a yellow come out so he can get back on to the lead lap on the tail end of the field so brad's really going to be pushing With the amount of lap cars with issues, the field has gotten a little bit smaller for this main pack. See a lot of the cars running the top line there. You see Brad back there in that 301 Miller red and white car he needs to get to the front he can't afford to just sit back here in this pack he needs to be up front and have a yellow come out We're on lap 89 out of 150. Everybody on the lead lap, last pit together. On lap 72. really fighting on that bottom. We have 19 cars on the lead lap. Points leader Brad is the fourth car in shot there in line. Brad really needs to move forward. 
came into the, this race as the points leader, winning at Sebring. to go with the line and we have Melissa as the new leader she's looking for a bounce back after last week's with her getting bumped into the wall from Maggie at Sebring on the opening lap of the season so currently running second looking to have a good day We got Melissa looking on the high side. We haven't seen a lot of passes on the high side work, but it looks like this one will, and she will take the lead away from Taylor. Melissa drops down to the bottom, almost bumps Taylor. That was dangerous. That was a gutsy move from Melissa. Anna really likes that low line, likes hugging the bottom. That's going to chew up her tires, though. Everybody can make it on one more pit stop with how these cautions have felt. We will go on board with Hannah as she loves running that bottom, that low line right along the white there. Looks like Taylor's taking away, taking away the air off her wing. And not letting her get down to the bottom there. That's as good awareness from Taylor to learn what Hannah wants to do and take that away from her. Everyone's getting a bit squirrely now. About halfway through the tire life. Starting to think about where they want to be at the end of the race. Do you want to be leading? Do you want to be in like fourth and get a good run? As once again, Hannah gets down to the bottom and takes the lead. Does have Melissa there. Charging up the inside. As Brad gets a monster run. And Taylor! Oh, Taylor! I can't believe she sent it in there below the lap car of Brad. That caught Brad off guard. He is falling back. What a gutsy move from Taylor. Oh, it looks like Darren's in the wall. Looks like Darren got in too hot and got up into the wall there. Doesn't look like any damage, but we will see as he appears to be coming to the pits. It'll be able to get away cleanly. However, that did mess up Devin Brown and Fred Green or with the lap down car of Alexis Schrader. They had got held up behind Darren. We'll go on board with Hannah as a... 
We'll see if she dives down to the bottom. No? Looking around the top. Taylor slides up in front of Hannah. But Hannah does make the pass. Ooh, it looks like Taylor's getting a run here. Hannah dropping to the bottom, protecting. As we're going to go three wide into one with Todd on the bottom. Taylor up top. Looks like Todd. Oh, who was that? That's Melissa. Melissa with an issue. What happened there? Do we have anything on the backstretch? Any debris? It does not appear so. As Melissa stops on track. Caution. Yellow flag. And that'll be a yellow flag. Looks like there was contact between Ken and Melissa. We will have to go back and see what happened. Here we are, watching Melissa in that cool... Oh, Brad got into Ken, and Ken slammed down into Melissa. We have Ken in the player's car with Brad above him. Ooh, maybe that was on Ken. As you can see, he's out of line. We'll go on board and see. We'll actually use the chopper. Ah, it looks like Ken just slid up the track. As Ken will get a drive through for that, for avoidable contact. So, tough break for Ken. Leading is Brady. It'd be a great start to the season for Brady, getting second in the first race, all of the bonus points, and now leading. Race number two. So we see he stays out. While the first car that, to come out that pit is Hannah. Hannah, Moto, Taylor. Steven. Samantha, Hunter, Devin, Fred, and Wanda. Are the cars that pit? Uh, it'll be a stretch if you can make it here. So it's a gamble to try and make it to the end. Probably hoping for a yellow somewhere in the middle of this stint. Whereas the rest of the field's gonna come in in about seven or so laps. And we will go green next time by, I believe.
We will go green next time by. With currently leading the race being Brady. Top nine cars stayed out. So we will see which strategy is going to work. Majority of the field pit, or I guess the half the field pit, half the field did not. Ten cars pit, ten stayed, nine stayed out. As we will see which strategy is the one to be. Green, green, green. We're green. The field stretches out quite a bit. As, however, back in the field, the cars that pit is a wild dash as the first car side by side is Steven Cheeson and Taylor up front Meyer is leading that lap Yes, he does. However, Jill gets a great run into one and takes a bit of a lead. Now, although she has this lead, we're going to see Todd get a massive run. As we see Meyer get an even bigger one. So that's the danger about getting too big of a gap between you and the car behind you. Is that they're going to get a monster out of the corner. Because it's almost flat. I don't know if it's flat in traffic, but... Whew. As we see coming out of the pits is Ken Wyman. Or no, Ken... That's Michelle. Michelle coming out right in front of the field. Ooh, it's going to be tough for the cars that are faster to get around. Maybe they'll have to run that high line. The bottom has been seen to be the line that you want to run when you're passing. Three wide for the lead up front. As we got Todd on the bottom. Jill in that silver car. That silver Verizon car. It looks like the cars on the older tires are hanging tough as we have Crass be the first one to come pit. He should be able to make it to the end of the race. It'll be tight, but he might be able to make it. Todd leading up front in that seven, number seven car, the United States Air Force Thunderbirds car. That blue and white car and that pink car in shot are laps down. Over that pink car of Alexis is... Oh, we see... Oh, that's... Who's that upside down? That's Michelle. Oh, flipping. Heading towards the inside wall and bouncing... Landed upright, but oh, geez. Caution, yellow flag. That's another yellow. Wild crash from Michelle. What happened? It looks like Todd got up into Michelle and she went airborne, flying over the entire field. We'll need to get the chopper view of that one. Oh, man. We'll get Taylor's on board. Coming, coming from right to left. 
You just see the shadow. Who's someone else in, in frame that we could get? We'll get John's view. This happening right in front of him. Oh, man, she takes off. That is crazy. As you see, the field coming to pit. You almost have to pit here. Oh. That takes the strategy out of the cars that uh weren't sure if they were gonna that gambled on trying to make it under that last yellow. And uh, we have word that Todd will get a drive through penalty as well for that contact with Michelle. To no surprise, Michelle will be the first retiree of the race. Only completing 113 of the 150 laps. Did Crass have some damage? Where is Crass? Why is he... Oh, no. Crass is... Ahead of the... He will get waved around. Crass and Ken... The first two cars in shot will get waved around. Ken being two laps down. Crass was a lap down. Having pit, but he stayed out to get that wave around. I believe they will get waved around the pace car this time by. Yes, they are. They are getting waved around. So your new leader is Samantha Keel. Samantha finished 10th last week at Sebring. Currently 30 points back from the championship leader of Brad. Brad is Currently in 19th, the first car a lap down. We are one to green. As the field is making its way through three and four. The starter has the green flag in hand. Samantha will lead the field to green. Green flag, green flag. As the inevitable bunch up happens. And they start to fan out before they hit the start finish line. Up front though. Oh, we have Andrew. Going around Samantha to the lead. Andrew taking the lead. So we have those top three cars, then it's all the lap cars. So right now it's a, a four-way battle, or really a three-way battle. That red car that just came into frame is John Vandewettering. He is the next car behind this group. But up front, I'm sure they're going to bunch up again. But 
You can see on the left side of the screen the gap from the leader. Is that an issue for Todd? That, or is he just coming out of the pits? I appears it appears Todd just hit. I I don't quite know. We'll get a quick replay. Oh, Todd had that drive-through penalty. I'm an idiot. So Todd did come out in front of the field. This is going to create a little bit of a mess. Once again, in that red and white car, at the top of your screen, at the top of the track, in that 301 red and white car, Brad is fighting to get back onto the lead lap. However, up front, getting around Todd after that drive through is Steven Cheeson. Things are getting dicey here near the end of the race. We have 32 laps to go. Who wants the win more than anyone else? There is a mix of cars that are a lap down and cars that are not. So it's going to be, uh, it's kind of tough to tell who's all in this lead pack that's on the lead lap fighting for the win. I will do my best to keep you informed about who is where and who is fighting for that win. Your current leader. Oh, we see Todd slow up top. If he have an issue, he's holding up the, all the, line, rows, the row of cars on the top. Big loser from that. Oh, we see Brad tapping the wall there. Did he break a tow link? It does not appear so. He is slow. So he might have... Oh, yeah. He definitely broke something. So that's a rough for your points leader. He's going to have to get in and get that fixed. And you can see that right front tow link is broken. Or it's bent. You can see a little bit of bend in there. Up front, though, is Myro. That orange, black, and brown and white car, the 24 car, is a lap down. He's fighting to stay on the lead lap. That is Kyle. I was hoping for a yellow. As John has taken the lead in the Bucky's car. Samantha is on the lead lap, fighting on the outside of John. As well as Tim Peglo in that Marlboro car. We got Crass. Crass looking on the inside of John for the lead. Maggie slow on the inside, dropping back, letting the, uh, the lead lap cars go by. Good move. Samantha's got a big run. Doesn't do much with it. Chooses to stay there. And just follow behind Crass. However, it looks like she's got a decent run on the high side there. As Fred in the Freightliner car on the bottom looks to go to the lead. But in the PPG car, Hunter will go around Crass. But it doesn't look like for long, it looks like Samantha's going to take that away. And Samantha did lead that lap, just barely. Twenty-five to go. The field is bunched up quite a bit.
Crash Nasty the lead around Samantha. That car looking down on the bottom, that 33 Cavalry car is a lap down. So he is trying to get his lap back. After you're getting stuck behind Brad getting to the wall, Andrew has made his way back up to second. Now Paul and Andrew, those two cars leading this pack, are beefing. So we'll see, uh, even though Paul's a lap down, how much give he's going to give to Andrew. They are on opposite sides of the track now, probably for the best. We're up front, Crass leads. Uh, whoever. Harden. Oh, wow. Big run from Crass. Crass goes deep into the corner. Will he be able to hold on to that, or will anybody get a run? Looks like Myroden. Drops on the bottom. Oh, we see some contact there. Who was that between? That looks like Samantha. Does Samantha have any wing damage? It does not appear so, but she definitely got into the back. Back of Crass. Up front now is Hunter. Very lucky for Crass not to have a tire go down. That front wing is sharp. We see Devin Brown go to lead. He's been quiet all race. Devin started in third, however, but never really was up front much. But he is now in this battle for the lead with 19 to go. Hunter really pressuring Myro. They go side by side to the line. 18 to go this time. Hunter will take the lead. Samantha's coming back. Big run on the inside will get Samantha the lead. However, this is creating a bit of a gap. Someone's going to get a huge run down the back stretch on her. goes down to the bottom of the track takes the lead and leads that lap we got Hunter way up the track the heck a lap down but really charging through the front John's got a decent lead now. That silver car going to the front. He is a lap down. That is Zach Schrader. He's a lap down looking to get up front, have a caution come out, get back on the lead lap. There will be no more uh, pit stops, so that's his only way to get back on the lead lap. As Robert Lee's into the bottom of Devin, gets around and goes to the lead. As now we have Samantha taking the lead. Back and forth, back and forth. Biggest mover last time by was Crash. Uh, he's up to 5th, starting 24th.
As we see Robert dive into the bottom. Will he slide up in front of Crass? As Devin's got a big run. Devin split the gap and is charging on the outside. Will he be able to hold on to this through the rest of the corner? As we see four wide behind, little bumping between Rob and Crass. Rob is coming to pit. Surprise, Robert Pitt. He was, uh, he pit 24 laps ago. Maybe the cars won't be able to make it. It was going to be tight. It was like them pitting on lap 113. That's 37 laps. That shouldn't be able to make it. I don't know why Robert came into pit. That blue and white car, that's Ken Wyman. He is a lap down. He is two laps down. Trying to get back one lap down. Samantha's having an issue up on the top. Did not pay attention and see what happened there. But Steven is out front. But not for long as Myro goes along the bottom and gets around. But look who's coming slowly but surely back up through the field is Hannah. Hannah's looking real good that last stint. Then that caution came out. We'll see if, yep, she's down back on the bottom. She really likes it down there on the bottom. Her car works real well down there. As these two cars around Byro in that purple car, that silver car and that blue car are both lap cars. The first two cars in lead lap are the purple and red car in shot. That's Myro and John. Myro got a bit of a gap off the corner, but I feel like this is gonna allow John to get a good run. John's setting up the run off the corner. Goes below Myro. And he will... Will he make that pass or he's going to be side by side going into one? Ken, for some reason, goes to the bottom. And then with Ken goes Jill. Jill's on the lead lap. So Jill's fighting for the win there. We have, we have nine to go. Lots of movement around throughout the field. Somehow, after being upside down, as we see three wide, these are all cars in the lead lap. After being upside down and flipping, I think twice, Michelle is back out on the track. I don't know how her car isn't toast. Oh, that blue and white car is a lap car that got around to the front. He's not even getting back on lead lap. It's just a lap back. However, it looks like Myro is trying to use that draft to gain speed to hold back Fred. Ooh, cars are getting dicey. The tires are getting old. Everyone pit 32 laps ago. Apart from Crass. Crass in that 69 car at the bottom of the screen, that pink, white, blue car. Pit 35 laps ago. Will he be able to make it to the end? Oh, 
Myro leading with five to go. Now Jill to the lead. We got Fred looking to the bottom. Fred started in 22nd. Worked his way up as Hannah splits the middle, going three wide into one. The purple car of Myro is on the lead lap, leading that bl dark blue and light blue car of Fred is also on the lead lap. I believe currently in the shot, just that light blue car leading the whole pack of Ken Wyman is two laps down. Apart from that, for the most part, these top couple cars are all fighting for the win. There are 16 cars on the lead lap. That's three wide, that's a three wide battle for the lead. Four wide if you include the lap car of Ken on the bottom. As Myro gets a huge run, squeezes Zach. Oh, we're getting dicey here, boys. Anna's getting a run on Myro. That is for the lead. And Jill goes to the bottom around both of them. Gets a bit of draft off of Ken. However, a monster run from Fred. And an even bigger one from Chris. Chris sends it down the inside. Fred's trying to follow him through. Chris to the lead. Slides up the track, allowing Fred to get by and lead that lap. Oh, that was the end of the race. What? <laughs> I lost track. Fred won the race. A pass at the line. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would have been more hyped for that. Chris sent it into three. We're going to have to get a replay of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Crass sent that in, getting past, down to the bottom. Crass sent that in, in the 69 car, in the center of your screen. Then Fred comes back. Fred comes back through four and beats him to the line. What a win for Fred. Fred started 22nd, Crass started 24th. My apologies for losing track at there at the end of the race. But Fred makes a last corner pass reminiscent of Joseph Newgarden getting by Scott McLaughlin at Texas two years ago for the win. Fred Green will be your winner here at Fontana. Your top 10 are Fred, Crass, Tim, Jill, Hannah, Myro, Samantha, Hunter, Andrew, and Devin. Wow. What a race. Here is how the points look leaving Fontana. Fred Green now at the top of the chart. Tied points with Brady. However, Fred has a win while Brady had a second place finish last week at Sebring. Fred up 21 spots with that win. Other notable movers are Tim Pagolo, Jill Sanvin, and Hannah Sheldon. It is still very early in the season and even drivers down at the bottom of the list that have had some bad luck still have a shot of coming back in this championship. Next week, we will head to Long Beach for the Acura Grand Prix. 
Long Beach will be another extremely bumpy circuit, similar to Sebring. We'll see if the drivers that did well at Sebring will bounce back after maybe having an off week here at Fontana.